G'day, I'm Paul. Now, if you wanted a seven seat Mercedes Benz previously, you had to get a GLS or more recently a GLE. But if, like me, you don't have mountains of cash in the backyard, Mercedes Benz has released this. It's called the GLB. It's a five seater, but it has two extra seats in the third row, which means it can moonlight as a seven seater if it needs to. And this one right here is the mid specification GLB 250, and it's priced at just under $74,000. Now, in terms of competitors, this really doesn't have a great deal of competition because it competes with the Audi Q3, the BMW X1. Both of those don't have seven seats. So if you look more broadly, there's the Volkswagen Tiguan Allspace and the Land Rover Discovery sport that kind of fit within the niche that this fits in. Today we're going to do a detailed review but if you do want to skip ahead to other parts of this review you can use the time codes on the screen up there or if you're on YouTube just scroll down and use the chapters below and if you haven't done so already I'd love it if you could hit the subscribe button also press the bell icon that's going to tell you every single time we drive a blue car. Let's talk exterior. Now the GLB is available in eight different colors and all but white and black are an extra $1,500. But have a look at this color. This is galaxy blue. It's unique to the GLB. I think it will eventually be rolled out to the rest of the Mercedes Benz range, but I think it looks sensational here on the GLB. Have a look down the front here. This is a big Mercedes Benz emblem. Look at that. <laughs> Spans my entire hand. Now, more importantly, this is actually a radar and also has a camera system that works with it as well. But this is quite unique because this system can see up to 500 meters ahead. So for things like radar cruise control and for the autonomous emergency braking, this system can see long into the distance. And it's worth keeping in mind that in Australia, where we go up to 100 kilometers an hour, the car really doesn't have to work that hard. If you're driving this in Germany, where you're doing 200 kilometers an hour, having a radar and camera system that can see so far ahead is important. I love this design. This grille here looks really cool with these chrome highlights and the GLB 35 which is the AMG version of this car, will actually get the vertical slatted grille so you'll be able to visually tell them apart. This car has the AMG styling pack on it as well, which adds the 19-inch alloy wheels that I'll show you in a second, plus some black highlights. That's $2,000 extra, and I think it really suits the car nicely. And you also get full LED headlights in there with adaptive beam. You can also option a matrix LED headlight to fit into that cluster. Some blanked out grills down the front here, suggesting a more powerful version is coming. 19 inch alloy wheels these are the ones that come with the AMG package so five spoke they look really nice and then you get your cross drilled rotors in there as well 50 profile I'll be keen to see whether this car rides nicely because I don't know 19 inch alloy wheels SUV it's a recipe for disaster but Let's see how it goes. Now it is worth keeping in mind that an 18 inch wheel is a no cost option. The benefit of that is it's easier to find snow chains for an 18 instead of a 19. Cladding on the wheel arches to show people that you go off road, very important. Okay, now let's move down the side of the car. Black mirrors here, you get these black roof rails as part of the AMG package, plus some privacy glass. In terms of dimensions, it's just over 4.6 meters long and 1.65 meters tall and a little over 1.8 meters wide. So what does that mean? in terms of size compared to the GLC. Well, it's slightly shorter than a GLC, taller than a GLC, and sits on a slightly smaller wheelbase. A little bit confusing, right? Have a look at this back section here. So to accommodate those seven seats, it comes to the end and it's like a waterfall that just drops off. So that's your seven seat cavity in there. And you'll notice with something like a GLC, it kind of tapers off a little bit to give it that stylish design, whereas this is just very much a boxy design to make sure you can actually fit passengers in the third row. Now, sorry about how dirty this is at the back. It's been raining a little bit. Um, the back looks really good. So LED tail lights are built into here. These come standard across the range. Quite a decent looking rear end, despite the fact it has that sort of carved off end on it. it it actually looks nice and let's see if these exhausts are real no they're entirely fake let's talk interior now this may look familiar to some of you if you watched our a45s review if you haven't watched that click up here to watch us review that this is because the glb shares a platform with the a class the b class and the gla so they're all sitting on this one platform and in fact the glb is longer than the long wheelbase version of the A-Class sedan that's on sale in China. So it is a big car that they've stretched out onto this platform. And often these platforms are developed so you can stick a whole bunch of different models on them. Now that means you get MBUX and you also get a really nice looking interior with a lot of good materials used throughout it. Check out these brushed aluminium parts along the dashboard and then along the center tunnel there, you get some piano black highlights. Not a huge fan of piano black, but it's there anyway. And I love these air vents. They just feel really cool to turn around and then you can swivel them to 
lock and unlock and then you have led ambient lighting throughout the cabin and these offset colors as well the interior just really looks airy and spacious with all of these light colored materials in it but how good are they we have our hardness tester here we often joke that motoring journalists are the only one that care about soft touch surfaces so we bought a tool to test the hardness of these surfaces so let's test it out on the dashboard there Hey, that's not too bad. That's in the 60s. And then we'll test this center console as well. See what that's reading. Wow, that's impressive too. Now, by the way, this car is built in Mexico, like a lot of good beer. What about build quality? Well, it actually all feels pretty decent. There's nothing moving around. It's all sort of fairly well put together. And it feels premium enough for its 75-ish thousand dollar price tag. Let's talk infotainment, MBUX. It is Mercedes-Benz user experience. Today, I'm going to take you through the infotainment system and also the screen in front of the driver. It's only a brief overview. If you want a detailed MBUX review, plus all the features that it comes with, you can click up here to have a watch of that. So in the GLB, you get two 10.25-inch screens that are attached and sit next to each other. You can control the infotainment system with your finger just by swiping. You can use the touchpad down here that allows you to transition between the screens. Or alternatively, you can use the joystick pad on the steering wheel as well to go between each of those screens. In terms of phone connectivity, you have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. They're both a wired system though, so you can't use wireless on this car. I'll show you what that looks like. Ugh, okay, so it's not a full screen integration, which is a little bit disappointing. I would have liked to see that taking up the entire screen. It just looks so much better. Now, in terms of radio, you have AM, FM, DAB+, plus digital radio, plus the ability to stream Bluetooth and USB. There's three USB ports, one up the front here, and then two inside the glove box. You have controls here for the climate controls. Then in the info section, you can see details on the engine, how much power and torque it's producing, temperatures, and then consumption, and then exactly what the car is doing and what the adaptive dampers are doing as well and then on top of that you also have an owner's manual built into the car so you can access that at any time you also have remote connected services through the mercedes me application and you can download that onto your phone and that allows you to connect to the car remotely check the status and even start it on some cars as well finally let's have a look at the navigation so it's a really high resolution screen and then if you do want to type in a destination you can either use this touchpad to write it in you can type it in on on the screen there or you can use the steering wheel controls to navigate through all the different letters there or finally voice recognition this works really well for phone calls navigation even changing functions around the car finally you have the screen in front of the driver there's a high level of customizability so you use the right hand side controls for that screen so you can flick across here change the displays as you go and then on top of that you can also change what's in the center of the screen so you can have the telephone up there if you want or if you want to change entirely the way that it looks you can come down here and pick something like the progressive display and that changes the entire layout of the screen so really impressed with mbux and the more i use it the easier it is to use it's not quite as intuitive as iDrive, but mercedes-benz has done a really good job with it so infotainment done and dusted let's talk about the other features you get standard with the glb 250 dual zone climate control love the switches too they're nicely knurled you get electric seats with memory for the front row heating on the front row as well so you're going to be nice and cozy up here you get autonomous emergency braking that works at low and high speed detects pedestrians as well blind spot monitoring you get a lane keeping assistant and then you can also add on top of that a semi-autonomous driving function which controls the steering inside the lane works okay I probably wouldn't bother spending money on it. It's around the sort of $2,000 mark. You get front and rear parking sensors and a reverse view camera, but you can also option the vision package, which adds a 360 degree camera and matrix LED headlights. You also get a panoramic sunroof as standard that adds a whole lot of light to this cabin, which makes it feel a lot bigger than it is. You get an auto dimming rear vision mirror and side mirrors. And then on top of that, you get the off-road engineering package, what the hell's that? Well, it adds downhill speed control. And then if you go to the off-road menu, you get a display here in front of the driver that shows you the inclination angles and what the car is doing off-road. So very handy stuff if you do ever plan on going into the bush or going for a drive with the kids off-road. And finally, the key, what does that look like? Here it is, very nice and fancy looking. So you have lock, unlock, boot, you get this nice metallic finish down the bottom and then blank on the back with the Mercedes-Benz symbol there. It's a proximity sensing key, so you just keep it in your pocket, grab the door handle and then push the push button start to get the car going. What about practicality? Let's start off with where you're gonna store your things. Phone, 
doesn't really fit into the cup holders, especially not my big phone, which is a little bit annoying, but you do get wireless phone charging. That slots in down the front there. It's rubberized as well, so it's not going to move around anywhere. Bottle fits into there. And what you'll notice as well is you can lock these out and then bounce them back into position using that button. And then inside the door, you have bottle storage with room behind it as well for other things. Center console, decent size, and then glove box. That's not too bad, and there's a little tray up the top there as well for, I don't know, coins and stuff. A little bit of netting, and then sunglass holder. Now, what about comfort? The seats feel really nice. They hug you in nice and tightly, but I have a secret to tell. This isn't leather. It's Artico, which is fake leather. You have to pay extra for leather, unfortunately. And the steering wheel, well, it's an AMG designed wheel, so it fits nicely in the hand. You've got paddle shifters on the back, and then there's flat bottom as well. So back seat, but before I close the door here, have a look at this. The door opens almost 90 degrees. So it's a bit like a Subaru Forester, which means it's easier to load kids and people in because you're not kicking the door on your way in or out. So that's good to see. Now, in terms of the features you get back here, matte pockets in the back of the seats. If you look down here, you've got two USB outlets, plus a little storage bin, and then a coin tray, rear air vents, center armrest, and then the cup holders hide in here. Let's see how they fit our bottle. I love that little retraction mechanism. That is over-engineered, but very cool. And then you can store your bottle inside the door as well. A little bit of extra room there for rubbish and food scraps and whatever else kids have. The seats, they have Isofix built into the two outboard seats, but they also recline. Each of the seats has one of these little tabs on them. So it means you can bring it forwards or backwards to give yourself a little bit of extra room. You can also slide forwards and backwards. Now, in terms of how much room I have as an adult here, I've actually got a decent amount of knee room, plenty of toe room, and headroom is pretty good even with this sunroof. Keep in mind that my seat normally goes quite far back, so the fact that they've managed to craft this much room out of a car that's based on an A-Class is really damn impressive. Now, before I show you how much room there is in the boot, let me show you the third row. So you can see here, you don't have to be a math genius to figure out that I'm not going to fit in there. I've had too many beers. Um, so you drop this down. That reveals the third row. So you can see from here that that is a kids only zone. It is a pretty cramped space, but you do get isofix points in the back there. And then because this row slides, you can afford yourself a little bit of extra room for the kids to get in. Then while they're in the back there, they have cup holders. They have their own USB ports and storage on either side of the car. And the airbags go all the way back as well. So they're going to be fully protected. So you can see here why they call this an occasional third row. It's technically not one you want to be using all the time. So let's talk cargo numbers. Given this is a three row car, how much are you actually going to fit in here? Power targo, by the way. So in this space here, you have a little over 100 litres. It's not a huge amount of room, and you can see that it just fits a laptop bag, maybe a little bit of shopping. But this is a clever feature. Under the floor here, you have space for the cargo blind. So when you do need to get the third row up in a hurry, you don't need to have this sort of sitting on the footwell or people holding onto it. Emergency triangle under there, and then extra storage if you need to slot anything in. The seats then fold fairly easily like this. When they do fold, you get between 500 and 700 litres of space, depending on how far back or forward the second row is. And then if you fold the second row entirely, that expands to almost 1,700 litres of space. Now, before I do that, I'll show you what it looks like with the bags inside. So they fit in fairly easily, and then off to the side, you have a couple of tie-down hooks. But I'll show you what it looks like when the second row is folded as well. So that folds like that, that folds like that, and then that folds like that to give you stacks of space. So we've hit the road in the GLB, and let's start off with the engine. The 250 is powered by a two-litre, four-cylinder, turbocharged petrol engine. It makes 165 kilowatts of power and 350 newton metres of torque. Mercedes-Benz has mated it to an eight-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission. So it's the first time they've used this gearbox in their cars that aren't performance cars. So it's new to the car and it actually works pretty well. Normally I'm not a huge fan of dual-clutch gearboxes, but this one seems to work quite well. It doesn't sort of have that harshness at low speed. It doesn't judder or, or do anything to give you less confidence in what the car is doing. What about fuel economy? 7.7 .7 litres per 100 kilometres, around 9.7 litres per 100 kilometres. So significantly higher, but the car has spent a fair bit of time idling, so I do expect it to be a little higher, but it's pretty close to 10 litres per 100. Now, what does that engine feel like? So in comfort mode, 
It's actually pretty punchy. It gets along nicely. It comes with a nice engine note as well. But if you use the dynamic selector here, we'll throw it over into sport mode. It instantly puts the gearbox into a sport mode as well. It has adaptive dampers, so everything becomes a whole lot firmer. And it becomes really punchy. Get a bit of noise plumbed into the cabin. It's actually quite dynamic. The steering becomes a lot heavier as well. And then it's sending a whole lot more torque to the rear, which is what gives this a slightly sportier feel. It sits nice and flat through the corners as well and good communication through the steering wheel. It's actually quite entertaining to drive. Now, while you're in a sporty mood, what does zero to 100 kilometers an hour look like? Actually feels pretty good. It's not lightning fast. That's what the AMG models are for, but it feels quick enough. Formatic, what does that mean? It's Mercedes-Benz torque for all-wheel drive. Now it is interesting the way they develop the torque split. So right now we're in comfort mode and it's 70-30 front rear. So it's sending 70% of torque to the front axle, 30% to the rear. If you go into sport mode, it's inverse. So it only does 30 to the front, 70 to the rear. And then in off-road mode, it acts like a center differential lock where it sends 50% of torque to the front and 50% of torque to the rear. So it's quite an advanced all-wheel drive system to be able to switch all those things on the fly. Now, if you do want to do some towing in your GLB, it'll tow up to 2,000 kilos with a braked trailer. And there's 213 millimeters of ground clearance. Not a huge huge amount, but if you are going to a campsite or a muddy track or something like that, that should be enough to get you over most obstacles. Now let's talk about the ride. I mentioned earlier that I was expecting this to be pretty average on 19 inch alloy wheels. I am seriously dumbfounded by how good this rides. I was expecting it to be quite firm and I don't know, Mercedes Benz sometimes, unless you're in an S class or an E class, the ride just isn't really that good. This feels fantastic. It is soaking up bumps beautifully. We do a lot of our filming out on country roads and normally that unsettles a lot of city cars, whereas this feels really nice. So there's a lot of compliance there. The adaptive dampers really do a good job of giving you a comfortable ride in comfort and then an edgier, sporty ride in sport mode. It is also worth pointing out that with the steering, while the feel is nice in comfort mode, it really doesn't have a great deal of resistance, makes it easy to park. It has a variable ratio rack, so that means if you do want to dial it up, it's able to make the steering a whole lot more direct without actually having to change any mechanical components in there. So that's a really clever technology. Now, most importantly, if you're gonna be using this as a family car, what's the visibility like? Well, out the front, it's great. Out the sides, it's good. The wing mirrors are big enough with the blind spot monitor built into them. Visibility through the rear is good, but if you do have that third row in action, it's gonna be hard to see out the back of. In terms of road noise, Again, coarse chip road here. The ride is great, but so is the noise. There really isn't a great deal coming into the cabin. Even on these 19 inch alloy wheels, there isn't a whole lot transmitted through. So if you do a lot of road trips, this isn't going to send you deaf with drone inside the cabin. So Mercedes-Benz GLB. This is overall a really positive review because I've found it hard to fault the car. It drives really well, it rides beautifully. And while you're not gonna fit adults in the third row, it is perfect as an occasional use row. If you've got a I don't know, take the kids out for ice cream, plus all their friends or whatever. You can still put luggage in the back, plus kids if you need to. So this is a really good proposition. I'd also be going for this one here, the 250. It comes with a lot of standard specification. It's really not that expensive when you look at the competitors in this set and how much extra you need to spend to get a fully fledged seven seater. So let me know in the comments below, what do you think of the GLB? Have you got one on order? What else did you cross shop? Keen to get everyone's feedback. And if you did enjoy this video, I'd love it if you could hit the like button follow it up with a subscribe and also press the bell icon so you can find out every single time we publish a new review but until next time take it easy